Once you've gone ahead and created your mass elements and you've gone ahead and added in mass floors, you can go ahead and create a schedule to review the properties of the mass. You can further your analysis of the masses by going ahead and adding in some calculated values. Creating a schedule like this is pretty helpful in the early stages of the design process. It can help you understand how efficient you're using the space in your design. Let's take a look at what kind of values are available to us. I'm going to come over here and pick the cylinder and then come over to properties and go down the list. You'll notice that we have a number of properties that this mass contains. Not only do we have radius and height, we've also got gross floor area, gross surface area, and gross volume. So we can use these in a schedule to kind of compare how these all kind of stack up. Now, what we've done here is that each one of these primitives is basically occupying the same size footprint. So we're going to go ahead and use that in our analysis to see basically what the overall volume is compared to the floor areas and the surface areas. We're going to take a look at that and see how it turns out. We're going to go ahead and uh, start off, first of all, by going over to the View tab. On the Create panel, find Schedules and pick up Schedule Quantities. Go to the Filter list and make sure that everything is cleared here except for Architecture. Because we don't need to have a lot of additional categories that don't apply. So we're going to come down to Category. And in this case, what we're looking for is Mass. And we're going to keep what we see here acceptable. We're going to have mass schedule. We're going to do building components, and the phase will be new construction. Go ahead and press OK. We're now into the designing of the schedule here. So what we're going to start off with is fields. We're going to pick the fields that we need for our analysis. So I'm going to pick up family. Hold down the control key. I'm going to pick up gross floor area gross surface area, and gross volume. So these fields that are already within our project here, we're picking up. We're going to come over here to the Add button and schedule them for our schedule. So you'll see here that they're part of what we have. Next thing, we're going to make a calculated value. Now in this case, uh, what we're going to do is click here. We're going to call this first one volume to floor ratio. So let's type in volume to floor ratio. And we're going to accept what we see here. We want a formula. We're going to use just common. We're not going to get involved in any kind of structural or anything like that. So we're going to pick that. And we want a number. We don't want text or an integer or currency or anything. We want a straight number that comes out of this field. Now go click into formula. Now, when you write a formula in here, there's a couple things you should be aware of. Number one, you have to be pretty exact in the way that you type it. So if you misspell or put a space in there, it might not calculate or do anything. So in this case, we're going to use a little helper to start the formula. We're going to come over here to this button because it already shows fields that are available for me to go ahead and use. So I'm going to pick up gross volume and I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to come over here and put a parentheses in the front. And then I'm going to slide through. So I come here and I'm going to divide by one foot. Now I'm dividing by one foot in order to keep the unit values consistent when I divide. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to contain that as a quantified quantity there. And then I'm going to divide. And I'm going to divide by gross floor area. So I'm going to find gross floor area, click OK. That's my formula. I'll press OK, and it now becomes part of my list. Let's do one more. And in this case, we're going to do a surface to floor ratio. And again, we're going to keep everything that you see here as it is, except for the formula. What we're going to do here is we're going to pick the gross surface area. We're going to divide that by gross floor area. So let's find the gross floor area and then press OK. And we'll press OK again. You'll see now we have all this information that's in there. That's all we really need to create this simple schedule. We're going to hit OK. Here we have 
our information. If you look at the different numbers, here you got the box, cylinder, and pyramid. You can look at what each one basically contains. Just looking at the numbers here, the pyramid is probably the least efficient one when it comes to working with it. Looks to me like the pyramid form would require a lot more surface and volume to create anything that comes close to either the box or the cylinder. The box obviously is probably the most efficient form. One of the things that goes on here, you can generate these schedules and you can use data to analyze it before you've even begun to draw any kind of actual geometry. Since these masses and the floor masses are kind of light, you can use them to explore your design ideas without really having to kind of develop any kind of heavy-duty geometry where you have to put in walls, floors, and all that kind of stuff. So it's fairly useful to go ahead and use masses in this capacity.